So find the point first. If you find that point first, you're going to end up, you plug in 2, which is that x value that they give you, mm -hmm. uh, and it gets out 2. So right. the point is 2, 2. Yeah. So you can find that point, and you're like, okay, I've got that. Well, the bulk, of course, as you know, is the rest of this problem. So to find the slope, you need that limit definition of derivative. And what do I want you to write down every time you're going to use it? Write down the limit definition. There it is. So this is one step where instead of a, what, what's being put in there? Two. You see the two? So you do it out. You're real careful. And when you do some simplification, you end up right here. Can you do that algebraically? No. no. Why? What's the, what's the tell? What's the tell that shows you you can't do that algebraically? Yeah. What? The H, H is in the exponent. That's a really good tell because you don't really know how to deal with that yet algebraically. So what do you make? You make a table. The key thing about making a table is making sure you plug this into your calculator really, really carefully. Mm -hmm. You put it in this y1 and make a table or you evaluate each value. You just have to make sure you type this in super carefully with the appropriate parentheses. What happens if you mess up like a single parenthesis? So yeah, so for example, one common way people are going to mess this up, I would imagine, the exponent 2 plus h, is that touching a 4? No. no. So some people put parentheses around the whole thing, make it 2 plus h, as the, no, it's 4 times in parentheses. And then you need a parenthesis around that to make the h, mm -hmm. the divided by h. A lot of them have people type this and do minus 1 divided by h. And that's avoiding dividing that by h, which does not work. Right. It does not work. And a good sign that it's not going to work is when you make your table, it's going to come out with values that are super weird. Like, when you know it's nice when these values get closer and closer together. That's the yeah, whole point, right? Yeah, I got So what you need to do is you need, to check your, you need to check your input in your calculator. Check how you wrote it in at, in the function okay. line. That yes. is by far the most common way. Because I got an answer that actually made So oh, well. draw a tangent line at 1. Where does it, So this right here, that slope, you see that one? Where's 4? Four? 4 is right here. There. See that slope? Yes. Which one is bigger? F of 1. F prime of 1. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see that right there? No, no, don't apologize. No, no. Just because something is easy to draw, just sometimes something easy is to something is just because something is easy to maybe write out in one sentence doesn't mean it's easy to figure out in the first place. Yeah. Like drawing a line theoretically is not that hard, but you need to see what you're comparing. Yeah. One heads up. Next week, we're gonna do today is we're gonna go through a little bit more. Okay. So if I asked you this question right here. You quickly realize that you end up with a limit that you cannot solve algebraically. But when you use a table, you end up with f prime of 2 is approximately what? Negative 0 0.174. Generally speaking, I want to go to th three decimal places. More if you can, but minimum of three. Minimum of three. So the point is, sometimes you can do them algebraically, as you know. And sometimes you have to do them uh, using a table. Using a table. OK, so here is a table of values. Here's a table of values. Can you figure out what the function is? Don't say it out loud. Can you tell me what the f of x is? x cubed. So sometimes we'll get a table of values. You have to come up with a relationship between the two lines, rows. And then now that you have a function, could you use the limit definition of derivative? Don't do it. But could you use the limit definition to find the derivative? Yes. Yeah, you could. Now, you have to be prepared to do trick. You have to be prepared to do basic trick. What, is, what are some key things when you're working with trig? One, you need to know the unit circle, and I can almost write today, sorry. You have to know the unit circle. You have to know the unit circle. You have to know it. And then the other thing is, what mode should you be in? Radians. Radians for life. Sometimes you will use degrees, but it's only going to be when I specifically say use degrees. Make sure you're in radians and only change it off of it if you're specifically told. The quickest way to get really frustrated on these, I mean, it, it's actually not that bad because usually if you, if you do the wrong radians or degrees, your answer just becomes like super, not makes, doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Um, so just be careful. So this one right here, to find the equation of a tangent line, what are you looking for? What are the two things you need? A point and a slope. A point and a slope. So do this for me. On this question right here, D right here, find me the point. Find me just the point. Don't say it out loud, but find me the point. Find me the point. What's the point? That pi over 4. Yeah, so you could plug it in directly, and you end up with 3 cosine of what? Pi over 4 plus 2. Now, there's two ways to get a value for this. That is technically correct, but I either want you to know exactly what that is or use your calculator if you had one. Even if you have your calculator, you should be able to know what the exact value for that is because you need to know what cosine of pi over 4 is. Does anybody remember what cosine? You need to remember that basic unit circle. So you have 3 times root 2 over 2 plus 2. 
So that would be the exact answer. Now, if you were using your calculator to do this, could you get a decimal? Yeah. Yes, but you're not going to have a calculator to do some of these. So here's the thing. You need to know the unit circle. There's not much more I can say other than memorize the unit circle. Really, you only need to memorize which quadrant? First one. The first quadrant, because everything is a reflection. Everything is a reflection of the first quadrant. If you memorize the first quadrant, you've got all of it. So now, what would you need to do for this one to find the, to find the uh, derivative? You would need to use the limit definition and then use your calculator to find a table of values. How comfortable are you guys making tables of values? Pretty comfortable? Yeah, it's, it's doable. You don't like doing it. That's totally fine. You don't like doing it, but you have to be able to do it. You have to be able to do it because here's the thing. You're not going to be able to have an algebraic method for all the things you look at. Even at the end of this course, you're still going to get to things that you don't have an algebraic method, so you need to use a table of values. You need to use a table of values. Okay, right here, what did we do first? The first thing we did is Danny's going to stop talking. We know that it, it pa passes through those points. We also know from here to here the derivative is what? Positive. And from here to here the derivative is? Positive. So it has to be above the x-axis. But between it, what's going to happen? Between it, it is negative. Between it, it's negative. So what does this thing potentially look like? We know it's positive to the left of one of that, that point to the left. So it might look something like this. It's going to go down. It's going to be negative, And then it's going to be positive. Is, is the derivative a line in this case? No, it is not a line. Sit down, everybody. Is the derivative a line? No. No. Is it going to be a V shape? Or are they going to be straight lines? No. no, they're not. So this takes practice. Look again, everybody. What were the easy points to find? Zero. The zeros. Where at zero, you go straight down, you know the derivative is zero. What's the derivative of zero? Well, here the derivative has to be negative. Oh, it is negative. The derivative is negative. Oh, it has to be negative. What about here? The, oh, it has to be above where it's zero if it's going to cross. Everywhere else, it's either positive or negative. The derivative is negative here, so it has to go below. It has to go below. It has to go below. So I would like you to do the same thing in your groups to this one right here.